MotoGP IndyCar World Series, which this year involves races from coast to coast, is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin today for stop number four, the Dana Rex Mays 200 at State Fair Park. An incident here a year ago caused the Bignotti team to demonstrate their displeasure with a cart decision by flying the skull and crossbones at Cleveland. Their driver, Tom Sneva, the 1983 Indy champion. So we felt we won this race uh, here in Milwaukee all along, and there was some dissension, and, uh, and they took it, tried to take it away from us on a technicality, but, uh, you know, the, the crew and I were all felt like we won that race fair and square. We went to the next couple races and flew a little flag with the uh, skull and crossbones on it to, uh, to sort of represent the, the crew's feeling, because they work so hard, and they have a lot of pride in what they do, and then they felt they weren't treated justly, and fortunately it was turned around, justice prevailed, and we ended up winning the race. The technicality that Tom spoke of involved the car's side pods. They were found to be too low, but Steva claimed they were lowered by the crowd in victory lane. Tom took the lead from Al Unser with less than 10 laps to go. Al Unser and Tom Steva battle for position down the back stretch as they go around Mike Mosley, but Steva unable to do so. Now in turn three, here it is, here it is, Tom Steva passing Al Unser in turn three, and Steva goes into the lead with seven laps to go. Tom Steva takes over the lead once again. So Tom Steva took the checkered flag, but for a while, Cart took the victory away. A three-judge independent panel later gave Steva back his victory here at Milwaukee. But now it's 1984, and three races have produced three wins. And so we greet you again from State Fair Park in Milwaukee, Wisconsin for the Dana Rex Mays 200. Beautiful weather here this afternoon, 77 degrees. Winds are northwesterly at 12 miles an hour, mostly sunny skies and only a 10% chance of rain. Hi everybody, I'm Bob Jenkins along with Larry Newber. Since 1950, six drivers have won the Indianapolis 500 and then come here the very next race and repeated with victory. It's happened two times in a row two years ago with Gordon Johncock and last year with Tom Sneva. And I think it is more than just irony. There is such an emotional crest that you reach when you win a big race like the Indianapolis 500. And what happens is the crew gets relaxed. You know all the big jobs are accomplished and all those little things that make the difference between finishing first, second, or third, they just seem to get done. And I think that really is a factor, winning Indianapolis, coming here and doing well at Milwaukee. Last Sunday, we had settled down for a duel between Tom Sneva and Rick Mears for the checkered flag at Indianapolis. But Tom Sneva dropped out of the race. Looks like that battle could be renewed here this afternoon. Yeah, I think you've got one of the best seats in the house right now, those of you at home. If I were there, I'd stay put because this could be a real excellent race with Tom and Rick up front. Then you mix in Mario Andretti. He's the only other driver who has won on the trail in 1984. He looks ready, and you start thinking about those great Ward, Foyt, Jones duels back in the 1960s, maybe Bobby Allison, Darrell Waltrip, and Cale Yarborough. This could be a humdinger, so stay close to the set. As is the case with all of our IndyCar races, Gary Lee is covering the pit area for us. Here's Gary. Thank you, Bob, and good afternoon. This Milwaukee mile underscores the importance of a fast, efficient pit stop. The race has been lengthened by 50 miles to 200 miles or 200 laps. The crews say they can make it on two stops. But remember, the track is only a mile in length. A slow stop could put a driver a lap behind the leaders. This is the fourth stop of the championship series. We've had three different winners, and all three are starting up in front. On the pole, the winner one week ago at the Indianapolis 500, Rick Mears. Outside the front row, the winner at Phoenix, Tom Sneva. And inside the second row, the winner at Long Beach, Mario Andretti. It was just Friday that Andretti said he was looking forward to racing wheel to wheel and side by side with his son, Michael. He'll have that chance today because the Andrettis are starting side by side in row two. The Dana Rex Mays 200 is brought to you by Pontiac. Test drive a new Pontiac at your Pontiac dealer because at Pontiac, we build excitement. And by the Ask For Motor Oil, Pennzoil, protection worth asking for. And by TR3 Auto Polish. You want tough? TR3 is tough. Take it from Mr. T. We'll be back with more from State Fair Park and the Dana Rex Mays 200 in just a moment. Four cars are lined up, ready to take off and warm up the engines before the start of the 200-mile, 200-lap race here at State Fair Park in Milwaukee. 
We're on a one-mile flat paved oval. And let's look at the starting lineup now for today's race. On the pole from Bakersfield, California, in car number six, driving the Pennzoil March Cosworth, Rick Mears. Qualifying at 143 miles an hour. Outside row number one, Tom Sneva, car four from Paradise Valley, Arizona, in the Texaco Star. The second row, Mario Andretti from Nazareth, Pennsylvania, in the Newman Haas Budweiser Lola, car number three. Outside his son, Michael Andretti, car number 99, the Electrolux Craco March. In the third row, Al Unzer Sr. from Albuquerque, New Mexico, in car number one, the Miller High Life March. And outside of row number three, from Milan, Italy, car number 33, Teo Bobby, in the fourth side skull bandit march. In the fourth row, car number five, Bobby Rahal from Dublin, Ohio, in the 7-Eleven Red Roof Inns March. And outside of row number four, Al Unzer Jr., car seven, in the Coors Light Silver Bullet. In the fifth row, Dick Simon, car number 22, the Break Free March, Dick from San Juan Capistrano, California. Outside of row number five, car 41, Howdy Holmes from Ann Arbor, Michigan, and the Jiffy Mixes March. In the sixth row, Gordon Johncock, car 20, Gordon from Coldwater, Michigan, the STP Oil Treatment March. And on the outside of the sixth row, car number 98, Kevin Kogan from Redondo Beach, California, in the Duvernay Curbs Record Eagle 84 car powered by Pontiac. The seventh row, Danny Sullivan in car 30, and Danny and Gaius in 25. In the eighth row, Al Holbert in number 21, and Chip Ganassi in number 40. In the ninth row, Chris Neifel in car 72, and Herm Johnson in 28. The tenth row, Gary Bettenhausen in car number 82, and Ed Pym in number 64. In the 11th row, Jeff Brabham in car number 18 and Roberto Guerrero in number 9. And in the last row, two added by promoter's option, Scott Brayton in car 37 and Stan Fox in number 24. Indianapolis, of course, is exciting and it's an essential part of every season, but it's always great to get back on the trail and go after that championship. Indianapolis car type racing, the major leagues of open wheels. Well, just a week ago, we were in Indianapolis and saw these guys compete. Now they're on a much shorter racetrack, but it should be a tremendous race. Here is Bobby Rahal driving the 7-Eleven Red Roofs in March. Rahal had a problem during this week. At first, they felt that he might not even be able to qualify for the race. All sorts of things went wrong. It was primarily an electrical problem. Then late yesterday, as they were getting ready to qualify, during the last practice session, the chassis went away. They worked feverishly. They pulled the car out of line, and then about 10 minutes before qualifying was over, like a bolt of lightning out of the sky, all of a sudden they found all their problems. They put it together. Ray Hall went out at the last minute and qualified seventh fastest. We are going to try to establish radio communication with Gary Bettenhausen. Gary, this is Bob Jenkins in the ESPN broadcast booth. Do you copy me? car number 82 starting from the rear of the pack and we'll be watching his progress throughout the afternoon this is a 1984 march the car was purchased during the month of may in indianapolis he did not make the starting lineup for the 500 but is here qualifying in 19th position for today's race the pace car moves off the racetrack and here come the starters down the front straight away and the green flag is out the rex mays dated 200 is underway and Tom Sneva are wheel to wheel off of turn number two and down the back stretch. Now Sneva with a slight advantage going into turn three. Now Mears with a slight advantage in turn number three as they battle for position off of turn four. the second corner and stretches it out just a little bit down the back stretch but an exciting first lap do you think we'll get to see mirrors and sneva side by side at all today bob <laughs> well this is what we had anticipated in the closing stages of last weekend's 500 it never happened but stay tuned because it seems to me that this could go on all afternoon for 200 miles here at milwaukee Running in third position is Mario Andretti, fourth is Michael Andretti, and fifth right now is Teo Fabi at car number 33. 
go down the back stretch once again with Rick Mears and about a seven or eight car length advantage on Tom Sneva off of the fourth corner once again to complete lap number three. Field is getting pretty well strung out already as Rick Mears sets the pace with Tom Sneva pursuing down the back stretch. Mario Andretti is about a half a straightaway behind, and there are the Unzers, Dad in number one, leading son Al Jr. in car number seven. Al Unser Sr., of course, a man who three times has won the Indianapolis 500. He right now runs in fourth, and here comes son Al Jr. taking a look on the inside as they're going after sixth and seventh position. Al Unser Sr., Al Unser Jr., there they are going through turns one, now turn two. Lenser in car number one, the Miller High Life, and right behind him is son, Al Lenser Jr. Al Lenser Jr. going to the outside now at turn number three, trying to pick up the position, setting his dad up perhaps for a pass coming off of turn number four, but dad showing no compassion for his son, at least at this point, as he is trying to hold on to sixth position. You know, you got to believe, Bob, that it becomes just another driver out on the racetrack. Although deep down inside, I suppose, there's a little bit of strand of uh, family ties there, but it's pretty obvious that Alan Senior is not giving any quarter to his younger, or rather to his son, who obviously is running a little quicker at this stage of the race. This will be a 200-mile race, 200 laps, so it doesn't necessarily mean that Alan Jr. is going to be ahead of that at the end of this race. The cars change a lot. They're very temperamental. There goes Junior to the high side. Off of turn number two, going down the back stretch. Al Unser Jr. pulling alongside and now passing his dad and picking up sixth position. Al Unser Jr. moves into sixth. Al Unser Sr. drops back to seventh position. Meanwhile, here is the leader, Rick Mears, in the Pennzoil March, car number six. He's moving off of the back stretch and already approaching slower traffic as he heads toward the end of the back stretch. The first car that he'll be lapping is Stan Fox in car number 24. Rick Mears from Bakersfield, California, who won his second Indianapolis 500 just a week ago. There is the interval between himself and Tom Stevens now Rick Mears goes to the inside as Stan Fox moves very high on the racetrack and allows Rick Mears to go around and lap him. Well, it only took seven laps for Mears and Sneva, the pace setters of this race, to move into slower traffic. Stan Fox, one of the people, was added at the promoter's option. Fox running the A.J. Watson Paps Blue Ribbon sponsored number 24. Spun and touched the wall here during the weekend's qualification and practice and had to be added to the tail of the field. Tom Sneva still about seven or eight car lengths behind Rick Mears as ne Mears now stretches it out just a little bit in turns number one and two. Mario Andretti is still running third. Michael Andretti is fourth. And Al Unzer Jr. is running in fifth position. Here's a good battle for eighth and ninth. This involves Kevin Kogan in the American racer. American because it's built by Dan Gurney here in the United States and powered by a Pontiac engine. But Bobby Rahal in the English-built March chassis with a Cosworth engine pulls alongside and tries to pick up the position. But Kevin Kogan explores the Pontiac, steps on the accelerator off of the fourth turn, and hangs on to seventh place. Well, you know, a lot of people felt that the stock block should have just a little more torque, particularly on the short tracks, than what the Cosworths. And in that particular lap, it certainly looked like that Kevin Kogan, when he keeps the RPMs up, really does have a nice amount of torque coming out of the corners. Rayall had kind of outbreaked, if you will. Kevin going into turn number three, but on the exit, Kevin floored it and took off. Kevin, by the way, has made the best move of anybody running up near the front. He started in 12th in that maroon and white number 88. And right behind Kevin and Bobby Rahal, Chip Ganassi lurks. Kevin Kogan qualified at 136.825 in that Pontiac-powered car. Good enough for 12th starting position and is running strong here in the early stages of this race. We move up just a little bit on the racetrack and pick up this battle between Teo Fabi and Al Unser Sr. Al Unser Jr. has moved away and now Al Unser Jr. goes to the inside and tries to pass Teo Fabi in, in turn number one. Teo Fabi, the man who was so spectacular in 1983, they've not really been able to reproduce the pace that they were running at at Indianapolis and Milwaukee a year ago so far in 84. Tail was the sixth fastest qualifier here. He had an incident with his crew during the running of the 500, and he really had hopes, perhaps, of pulling out of the race. He was not happy with the performance of the race car. They 
seem to have that patch back up. And Teo Fabi, the jet setter, who has been jumping back and forth on both sides of the Atlantic, is well represented here in the field today. You're watching six, seven, and eight. Teo Fabi and Bobby Allen, your senior, and Kevin Kogan. A couple minutes ago, we commented that Chip Ganassi was right behind this pack of cars we're watching right now that includes Bobby and Allen, the senior, on your screen. Notice now that was Gordy Johncock as we go back up to the front. Here are the leaders first and second, and Sneva has closed in. Tom Sneva is beginning to narrow the distance between himself and Rick Mears. We have completed 15 laps out of 200, and the top five show Mears in the lead, Sneva second, Mario Andretti third, Michael Andretti fourth, and Allenser Jr. fifth. We'll be back with more action from State Fair Park in just a moment. We know. We're going to move ahead now and pick up the race with 94 of 200 laps completed. Rick Mears has taken a pit stop and he has dropped back to third. In first place now is Tom Sneva with Al Unser Jr. in second place and Rick Mears in third place. Let's go back now to Bob Jenkins, Larry Newber, and Gary Lee, who is going to tell you who is out of the race right now at the Milwaukee State Fair Park in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. ESPN Live on this Sunday afternoon from State Fair Park in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Dana Rex Mays 200 for Indy cars. And the safety crews are taking the wrecked cars of Roberto Guerrero and Al Holbert off the racetrack. Here are the cars out of the race. Stan Fox, Chris Neifel, Scott Brayton, Roberto Guerrero, and Al Holbert. By the way, Al Holbert was running 17th and Roberto Guerrero was running 21st when the accident occurred up in turn number four. There's a list of the people who are out of the race and included in addition to Hobart and Guerrero, uh, Scott Brayton, Chris Knife, and Stan Fox. There's the Canadian tire crew rig. Remember that Jacques Villeneuve was to be their Indianapolis car driver for the 1984 season, and Jacques was involved in one of the most serious-looking crashes in uh, practice for the 1984 Indianapolis 500-mile race. Uh, Jacques was not cleared to drive here again this weekend. This time it was a Canadian doctor at home who said that he is still suffering from occasional dizziness so the crew was here the car was ready to go they were working on it even as late as yesterday leading into uh, qualifying but Jacques was not allowed to compete the doctor said no we also had a report that the crew is considering giving Ludwig Heimrath Jr. a shot at this Indianapolis car ride he may be practicing in it this week in hopes that if Jacques Villeneuve is not ready soon that perhaps Ludwig will have a shot there is the car driven by Mario Andretti, the Newman Haas Budweiser Lola, running third in the race at this point. Mario started third at a qualifying speed of 140.100 miles an hour. Mario Andretti, who was eliminated from this year's Indianapolis 500 because of an incident in the pit area, looking for a much better fate here in Milwaukee today. Some pit notes as we look at Mario Andretti. There he is on your screen. Right behind him is Al Unser Jr. as well as his own son, Michael Andretti. They're going at it for third, fourth, and fifth. Just a couple of pit notes. Car number seven was involved in a minor collision as we go green again during the last green flag session. They looked the car over very carefully during the last yellow flag. So we go back to racing with 97 laps completed. We are nearing the halfway point of this 200-lap race. There's the leader, Tom Sneva leading the pack down the back stretch. Now the second place car of uh, Rick Mears is about a straightaway behind, and Rick Mears has a lot of traffic to move through to catch Tom Sneva. So again, we may see Sneva take off like a rocket, and Mario Andretti is coming into the pit. Something apparently went wrong with that car as he got on the accelerator after the yellow and Mario Andretti screeches to a halt in his pit area, and he may be suffering some serious problems, or perhaps just a, uh, a tire problem. Here's Gary Lee. It looks like the wheel lug has come off the left front. Indeed, the left front wheel was loose and almost off the car as Mario brought it in. They're going to top off the fuel, change the right rear, change the right front, and now put to work on that left front. So indeed, under the yellow, he was able to bring it back in. Had he accelerated on the green, it could have been a disastrous effect because that wheel would have come off. Now again, they're working with the impact wrench, trying to secure the left front. 
Andretti wraps the throttle on the number three Budweiser Lola, and they're still working on it. They still could not get the lock nut to go on. Now they're changing that. They've gone to the third lock nut. Now they're twisting it on by hand. And that one's not working. Andretti trying to watch what is going on from the cockpit. He's been over a minute now in the pit area. The car is still jacked up. There's a quizzical expression on some of these crew members down here. And again, they go to a lug nut, the fourth lug nut. This time it works. The impact bridge has it on. The jacks are down, and Mario with a very, very long and very costly pit stop. So Mario Andretti, who was running third, is now uh, several laps behind as he gets back out on the racetrack. But again, bad luck has struck Mario Andretti and the Newman Haas racing team. Almost unbelievable, Bob, and I'm sitting here scratching my own head trying to figure out why three wouldn't work and the fourth one would after they've gone through three lug bolts, or rather lug nuts. I kind of figured they may have had a terminal problem. The length of the stop, by the way, Gary, was exactly right as we look at the leader, Tom Sneva, still out front and running very comfortably, it was one minute, 19 and a half seconds for Mario Andretti on that pit stop. But a real puzzling situation there with the left front on Mario Andretti's Lola race car. This, by the way, is a brand new car out of the box this week. It is chassis number three. This is the first time they've used it this year, and it probably will turn out to be their oval track chassis for the 1984 season. Tom Sneva has won the last three of four races on this track. He is leading at this point with 104 laps completed, and his lead over second place, Rick Mears, is a little more than five and a half seconds as Rick Mears is still trying to get through some traffic behind Tom Sneva. Here is Tom and the Texaco Star moving down the back stretch and setting the car into turn number three. Here's a partial list of some of the people still out on the racetrack, and the attrition has been incredibly small as we look at the interval between first, there goes Neva, he just went by, out of your screen, the yellow car, that'll be Rick Mears. About a straightaway, about that interval that Bob Jenkins suggested to you about 10, 15 laps ago. In addition to the two of them and the other people on the same lap, Howdy Holmes, Kevin Colgan still runs out there. All these people, by the way, are one lap down. Al Hunter Sr., Bobby Rahal, Gordy Johncock, Chip Ganassi up in the top 15. Danny Angaius having a consistent but not front-running day. Dick Simon, Gary Bettenhausen, Herm Johnson, Teo Bobby. He had to pit early, lost a couple of laps. Danny Sullivan in the DSR. They knew they were going to be behind, but because of commitments, they wanted to race. Jeff Brabham and Ed Pym in one of the other stock blocks. That's the list of the people still out in the race. Mario Andretti now will be the next car that Tom Sneva puts a lap on as we zero in on Chip Ganassi in car number 40 and behind him, Howdy Holmes in car number 41. They are being passed right now by Al Unser Jr. there in the black car. Herm Johnson, the lead car in this pack, but he is not in contention for a spot. Here is Al Unser Jr. moving to the inside as they come down the straightaway. Al Unser Jr. passing Chip Ganassi going into turn number one. Ganassi in that number 40 old Milwaukee march. Make that a wildcat. Ganassi running the wildcat here this uh, this weekend. Well, it's sort of a wild march or a march cat or something along those lines. It's actually one of those hybrids. They're trying to get as many miles as they can out of the wildcat design and there's some new experimental stuff on that car this week, and Chip Ganassi went out and just put her in the field, so pretty good job for Chip Ganassi. By the way, we saw Howdy Holmes about a lap ago. He was in this pack of cars. There's Al Unser Jr. He runs real strong up into the top three. Howdy Holmes, by the way, has now crept up into the number five position. That's Herm Johnson, who's several laps down with the orange wing on the front, but Howdy Holmes in the center of the screen right there, quietly now up to fifth position with the dropping by the wayside in terms of laps lost in the racetrack of Mario Andretti. Good racing here, Bob. These guys, all five of them, are running in the top 15. I think there are three different race laps represented by these five guys. They're <laughs> really going at it. And Gordon Johncock is also involved in the battle among these, uh, these cars. Well, let's go down to Gary Lee and find out a little bit more about what Mario Andretti's problem was when he came into the pits a few laps ago. Well, apparently during the pit stop under the yellow, the threads were stripped on the race car itself. When the lug nut went on, it did not secure the wheel. Andretti realized he had a loose wheel, came back in. There was one of the lugs they tried to get on, and you can see that it actually stripped the threads on the lug nut. They actually went through four of these lug nuts 
until they could find one that would fit on the race car and the impact wrench could actually get the wheel secure so Mario could go back out. That's the story of Mario Andretti. The story of Tom Sneva is that of speed and dominance so far in this race. He's coming down the complete lap 112 with still about a five second advantage on Rick Mears running second. Al Unser Jr. is still third. Michael Andretti is fourth. And Al Unser Sr. is running in fifth position. So Tom Sneva looking good here as we've completed more than half of this race. And we'll be back with more live from Milwaukee in a moment. 16 laps completed and Tom Sneva continues to lead with Rick Mears running in second position. Once again, Tom is about to put a lap on Teo Fabi in car number 33. Teo started outside of row number three in sixth place here, qualifying at 139 miles an hour. Steva moving off of the fourth turn. And Rick Mears about a straightaway behind. There is Rick blasting out of turn number four. Tom Sneva has done very well, as we mentioned earlier, on the one-mile, basically flat racetrack. He's won three of the last four here at Milwaukee. He has won four of the last seven at Phoenix. That's better than 50% batting average over the past four years in the world's toughest league as far as open wheel. Well, it's tied, baby, with the world's toughest league as far as open wheel race cars go. I've got to be careful of our friends across the oceans in Formula One. But this is a tough league to win with. And Steve wins about half of the races, or at least he has in the last four years, on these one-mile racetracks. So he's been up front before here on one of these speedways. Tom Steve putting another lap on Danny Sullivan that time around. Gordon Johncock in car number 20, running with Michael and Freddie in car number 99. And the other car in that stable, driven by Chip Ganassi, also here. Ganassi is the lead car in the trio with Michael Andretti and then Gordon Johncock. You're probably wondering where is the Johncock blue STP orange. Well, the STP orange is there. It's on the front wing. You saw Gordy just lassoing that race car as he came out at number four. He was riding it pretty good. There you can see the Gordon Johncock blue on the helmet. As you know, they crashed their frontline car at Indianapolis, and in talking with Pat Patrick this week, he said, well, there simply wasn't enough hours in the day or enough days in the week to get our normal Gordon Johncock STP colors on our race car, so we had to go with the old Milwaukee red, but they're still represented in both Gordy and Chip doing a pretty fine job, as usual, and as expected, there's Gordy trying to move underneath Chip going into turn number one. I'll tell you, when we visited Gordy in his hospital room last Tuesday, I knew he was determined, but somehow I really didn't think he would make it here, but by golly, he did, and he's looking pretty good here in the Rex Mays 200. Gordon Johncock. He's one of those drivers who competes equally well on the road courses and on the ovals. Okay, so you're not working the clutch as much this weekend, but in two weeks it's on to Portland. What will be the status of the ankle then? Well, I think in two weeks it'll be a lot more deal than it is right now, and uh, I don't really use the clutch that much on the road course anyway. I kind of, <laughs> I cheat a little bit. I, I, I shift without it. <laughs> I've shifted a lot out of it for a lot of years, and I guess I'm kind of used to it. So uh, uh, the pit stops is the main thing. The in and out of the pits and, and the start of the race is what's going to bother. But once I get going uh, on the course, I don't think it'll bother me at all. Obviously, you appear to be in good spirits, and you appear to be as racy as ever. Well, I feel that way, yes. Well, he told some of our ESPN people here this weekend that the first thing he thought of after hitting the wall at the 500 was, oh, no, I'm out of action again. I'm going to have to join the guys in the broadcast. Thanks a lot, John Cock. <laughs> he's, he's from the same neck of the woods where I grew up, too. <laughs> well, John Cock and the others will be in competition in Portland, Oregon, two weeks from today, and ESPN will have live coverage of that event. Well, these two guys, John Cock and Ganassi, teammates, and right behind them, yep, there he is in the Texaco Star, Tom Steva, looking to put yet another lap on these two drivers. Boy, Tom Sneva is, as you can, you know, you can watch the car almost, and as the car gets lighter, as the fuel is used up, and by the way, we've got to be less than 10 laps from pitting, although we did have some yellow, they did pit on lap 57, and uh, they probably can't go more than 75 or 80 laps under green flags. There is Tom's wife, Sharon. They 
can't go more than 75 or 80 laps before they have to pit. So those pit stops should be coming up very shortly. And Sharon is the one who's on top of that situation in communication right now with the crew. And they're probably discussing that very situation. How far should we go? They'd like to hold off and perhaps wait for a yellow. Uh, but getting to the point in the race where what also they're trying to do is to stretch this particular stop to the point where they can go the rest of the distance. You see 75 laps to go. 75 or 80 is about the furthest range these Indianapolis cars can get on a one-mile racetrack. So they'll stretch this one as far as they can so that the next one is easy, so that if we go green the rest of the way, they will not have to stop again. All right, let's run down the top 10 for you here with 126 laps completed. Steve leads, Mears is second, Allenser Jr. is fourth, and Michael Andretti, uh, rather, uh, Allenser Jr. is third, Michael Andretti is fourth. Those cars on the lead lap fifth, the lap down, is Allenser Sr., then Howdy Holmes in sixth. In seventh position is Bobby Rahal. Eighth is Kevin Kogan. Ninth is Gordon Johncock. And tenth is Chip Ganassi. And there is Tom Sneva moving alongside and passing Gordon Johncock. Tom Sneva's first Indianapolis car win was in 1971 at Trenton, New Jersey. He has 10 IndyCar wins and looking for number 11 here this afternoon. He, of course, was the first over 200 in Indianapolis back in 1977 and was the 1983 Indy 500 champion. There's Danny Sullivan on the far right-hand side of your screen. The far left-hand side is Bobby Rahal screaming down the back stretch. There is Al Unser Sr. He's out. He runs competitively. There's Ray Hall again, and I think that may be Danny Angaias running on the racetrack behind Bobby Ray Hall. And there, and once again, is Sullivan. The Domino's Pizza DSR. They had hoped to have a Lola, but as you know, if you've been following the series, that Lola was damaged in the Pat Bedard incident at Indianapolis. He was not involved directly. He was part of the aftermath of that crash. The Lola was damaged severely enough that it had to be sent back to the factory for it to be repaired. So. They're hoping to have the Lola a little later in the year, but right now they're back to the DSR. They know that it's not going to be as quick of a race car as some of the others, and certainly not as quick as the Lola. But uh, they're out like troopers that they are, Doug Shearson and team, and Danny Sullivan. He did a fine job getting that car to the field. He qualified into the middle of the field this week. Danny Sullivan out there taking his legs. Danny Sullivan is back in IndyCar racing after a year last year on the Formula One circuit in Europe. He's now 17th here at Milwaukee. Danny Sullivan from Louisville, Kentucky. And speaking of Formula One racing, they, of course, run the Monaco Grand Prix, and the winner was Elaine Prost. Boy, he's and just having he's... a great year. Uh, Prost, as well as Lauda and those McLarens, they've won something like five of the seven races that have been held so far. They are really doing very well. We also understand, as we look at the rest of the results, that Patrick Tambe broke his left leg and may be out for the rest of the year. So that leaves it up to teammate Derek Warwick to fly the colors for the Renault team. And we'll be in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, two weeks from today with live coverage of the Canadian Grand Prix. We anticipate a pit stop by the leader, Tom Sneva, momentarily. The crew is getting ready to change rubber and to fuel that car for the final 70 laps or so. Sneva in turn number two now. Again, running on the racetrack beside Dick Simon. Steven down the back stretch, maybe coming into the pits this time around. We'll watch the situation. Looks like he may be slowing in turns three and four, although he's going to the outside, and he has been blocked from coming into the pits by the string of cars there ahead of him, so we'll go one more lap. Three cars running right ahead of Tom Sneva, now moving to the inside of Ed Pym, who, by the way, is driving an 83 march here this afternoon. Michael Andretti and Kevin Kogan right ahead of Tom Sneva. Sneva moving to the inside of Kevin Kogan now. We'll see if he gets off the accelerator and onto the brakes to come into the pits this time. Not this time. It'll be a few more laps for Tom Sneva. I tell you, Bob, they're taking this one right up to the very edge. They are also showing the rest of the field. Not only are they fast, but they can go just about as far as they want to. That is vis-a-vis -vis the performance of the rest of the field on one load of fuel. He has gone 78. He's working on his 79th lap by our unofficial calculations, and he's not coming in even this time. Not Tom Sneed is really making a statement here today. I'll tell you. Now, you would have thought that they had the boost turned all the way up because he was so fast in the early stages of this race. 
but obviously not because he's still running out there with, with fuel still left in the tank. Gary Lee's following this story. Gary? Right now, the only communication the team has with Tom Steven is with the pit board. The radio is not working, so Tom cannot tell the crew when he is coming in. They here can only tell him he Gary. needs to come in. Here he comes. And they are ready for him. He is moving. They're ready for him. It looks like they'll be changing at least three of the four tires. And here is the Texaco star number four. They go to work. The car is up in the air. There is a chalkboard being displayed reading no more stops, indicating to Tom this will be the last stop. They changed the two right side tires. They're changing the left rear. The left front apparently is OK. They'll top off the 40 gallons of methanol alcohol. And Tom is patiently wrapping the throttle, waiting to go. The car is down off the jack. He spins the tires, and he is underway. I'll tell you. 19.2 seconds for Tom Steva. Gary, we saw a real story. I don't know whether you could see it or not, but Tom Steva, as he was getting that drink, looked like he was totally relaxed and ready for the, the final 64 laps or so of this race. He looked like he was out on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon drive. As Rick Mears goes by, he'll be coming in shortly. It looked like that Steve had just gone out to the refrigerator, got another cool one, was sitting here watching the race with us. That's exactly right. There's Rick Mears, who now is the leader, at least momentarily, but we anticipate a stop by the Roger Penske crew momentarily. While Tom Sneva's pit was near turn number one, the Roger Penske Rick Mears pit is the first one off of turn number four. Well, Rick will not be coming in this time. It'll be one more lap, so we'll take this break and then see what happens as we are live at State Fair Park in Milwaukee for the Dana Rick's Maze 200, and we'll be back with more action. Bob Jenkins, Larry Newber, and Gary Lee back at State Fair Park in Milwaukee. Rick Mears is now the leader. He has not made the pit stop. Running right behind him on the racetrack is Tom Sneva, who has made his final pit stop of the race. Bob will update everybody at home about that situation. We had a yellow flag around lap 90, and... Rick Mears and Roger Penske made the decision and crew made the decision to come in. Apparently they wanted to make some adjustments. And they did that on lap 90 and when they did, they topped off the fuel, which means he's going to be able to go distance. Uh, Peter Parrott, of course, the crew chief on Rick Mears' car, making those adjustments, but he cannot go the distance. Rick, too, will have to stop one more time. Right now, Tom Sneva has Rick Mears in his sight, so he's going to be feeling very comfortable about that. Our closest estimation that it was corroborated on the radio by Roger Penske is that Rick will have to stop around lap 160. That is 15 laps away. There is Mears in the yellow car, Tom Sneva in the white, black, and red Texaco trim behind him. But again, Rick Mears will have to stop one more time. That'll put him up. Uh, in rhythm together, and we'll see how it shakes down after the Mears pit stop in about 15 laps. Well, we have seen a very clean and safe race so far. Chris Neifel was knocked out of competition when he made contact with Stan Fox up in the fourth turn, and then a two-car accident here on the main straightaway involving Roberto Guerrero and Al Holbert, but the damage not serious there either. Rick Mears still trying to pass Michael Andretti here. Mayors is shown as the leader. And there you see an unusually designed Brennan race car. That's Gary Bettenhausen in that white car. And if it looks to you like you're an experienced viewer, there's Michael Andretti finding a new lane on the high side. Tom Sneva says, hey, I think that's going to work. He tries it, but he doesn't get through like Michael did. We started to talk about the unusually unusual shape of the front end of the white car there on the left-hand side of your screen. That's Gary Bettenhausen. That is, by the way, right on the nose cone, half of a 1972 Eagle wing on the front of Gary Bettenhausen's car. The rear wing, by the way, is off of two different Lightnings, vintage 1978 and 1981. Gary Bettenhausen runs a hybrid out here today. We are teasing him, Bob. We call it a Light Eagle Marchenhausen. And that's probably about the closest thing you've come to defining it. Well, you got a question. Oh, and Rick Mears looked like had to get on the brakes very hard as he was racing with Michael Andretti there, a little puff of smoke from the rear tires, but Smear saved it and is uh, moving down the back stretch rather well. We'll take a look at it again to see if we can determine exactly what happened in turn number one as Mears to the inside tried to pass Michael Andretti. Well, at this point, Michael and Rick are on the same lap. Michael runs fourth right now, or make that third, and there you see, as exactly as you called it, Bob, he had to get on the, Rick had to get on the brakes to keep them colliding on the outside with Michael. 
word from the card officials is that Howdy Holmes has been penalized a lap because of running over an air hose on his most recent pit stop. Now Rick Mears has been able to get around Michael Andretti. This is the way they're running. Rick Mears is in the lead. Al Unser Jr. is second. Michael Andretti is third. A lap down in fourth is Tom Sneva, but remember, he has made his final pit stop, whereas the others have not. And in fifth spot now is Al Unser Sr. Rick Mears, career earnings well over $2 million, $2,405,000 to be exact. On the screen, Rick Mears, Michael Andretti, and Tom Sneva. Sneva, by the way, celebrated his 36th birthday last Friday. And while we're expressing birthday wishes, we know there are a couple of people, and one especially watching us in Indianapolis, Indiana, who passed up a birthday celebration to be with us and watch this race. We're talking about Bob Laycock, who runs the press room at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and whose son Danny is a employee of ESPN, helping us with our telecast. So happy birthday to Bob Laycock. The situation is that Rick Mears crew is beginning to signal Rick that he may want to think about making a pit stop. There's Rick Mears going around the high side of Howdy Holmes. Howdy, by the way, he's had a competitive day. He's a couple of laps down. Matter of fact, I think he just went three laps down to the leader, Rick Mears. But Howdy runs in seventh position on the same lap with Mario Andretti. Mario, of course, lost his in the pits. Rick Mears, the leader at the Dana Rex Mays 200 here in Milwaukee. Rick, how does it feel to win Indianapolis 500? I'll tell you, it felt really good to win at Indy again. It really felt better than it did the first time. Usually they say the, the first time's the best, but uh, the way everything had been going, the second time was the best. And uh, hopefully, if we can get our third, that'll be better yet. Uh, Rick, where were you between the time you won the race afterwards and the uh, the interview that you gave between 8 and 9 o'clock the same night. Well, uh, between the race and the last time I was on television, we'd already done a, a little uh, Miller time celebration. How would you feel running the last three laps of the race? Well, the last few laps of the race were the toughest. Uh, when Sneva was running, I had to think about him, and I kept my mind off everything and just on my job. But when Sneva fell out, uh, then I started getting nervous, started worrying about the car and worrying about making a mistake. And there was, those are the toughest laps, the last three or four. Rick, are you ready to move over for Tom Sneva? Well, we're ready to move over for Tom Sneva, but uh, I tell you, the car will be awful wide if he gets there. I asked him how long he'd be driving. Well, I think uh, to do something well, anything you choose to do, no matter what you do, uh, you have to enjoy what you're doing. So I don't know how long I'm going to continue to drive him. I'll, I'll continue to drive him as long as it's fun, and I enjoy it, and I can put out my best effort. Rick, what is your phone number? <laughs> well, the phone number is unlisted, Linda, but uh, give me a holler and I'll give it to you. <laughs> well, Linda Vaughn, of course, is who he's referring to and who asked the last question. Well, the situation now is Bobby Rahal has blown an engine, or at least a big puff of smoke from the rear of that car, and that has brought out a yellow flag. That means that the field is slowed, and now Rick Mears will be able to make his final pit stop under yellow whereas Tom Sneva had to make his under green a few laps ago. They are working on the Bobby Rahal car, but from the indication and the smoke in the rear of that race car as he went down the back stretch, I don't know whether he's going to be able to get back into the race or not. Well, Bob, here's an interesting situation. I do not know how this is shaken down as far as actual positioning on the racetrack goes, but I'm wondering now if Rick Mears would not be in a position perhaps to make a pit stop and still stay ahead of Tom Sneva. I don't even know if uh, Tom could get back on the same lap. I have a feeling that if Rick were to stop right now, there is the mentor of that team, Roger Penske. I think that if Rick were to stop right now, he'd come back out in the lead. And Roger right now is checking on the scoring in his own pit area, trying to decide what exactly their best move is. There's M Mario Andretti, who has come out, and the report is he lost the wheel. The left rear, is it perhaps missing? There yes, it is. is. There it is. So Mario Andretti having wheel problems for the second time in this race. Remember earlier, and Rick Mears, our leader, is in the pits. Larry, I think you're absolutely right. Because the cars are slowed, 
Rick is going to be able to pit without losing a lap. Here's Gary Lee. And no tire change. They top off the fuel up very fast. Stop for Rick Mears. And once again, the same melody that we had in the Steva camp. The radio is not working. Rick came in, uh, tried to come in immediately as the yellow came out. He signaled for him to stay out there so the pace car could pick him up as the leader. So once again, no tire change. A very fast refueling job by the part of the Roger Penske organization. All right, and Rick Mears blends into the rest of the field as Mario Andretti begins to move now, despite the fact that he has no left rear wheel. Apparently, he's going to try to drive that car to his pits. Well, Mario Andretti moving around. We believe that he was told not to leave as they were leaving the pit area. His, his crewman on the uh, left rear is trying to stop the proceedings, but you know, no communication there at that point. The crewman knew that the wheel was not done. Mario leaves the pit area, and now he has to move around this racetrack, an unusual sight on three wheels. The three-wheeled vehicle of Mario Andretti moving toward the pit as we have completed 160 laps, and we're set up for a great finish here in Milwaukee. Rick Mears. There's a study in... Bob, I getting think me was, out of the pits. I think what was going on there as we look at the front runners in this race, Rick Mears still the leader, Al Unser Jr. next, then Tom Sneva. Michael Andretti running fourth, and Al Unser Sr. is fifth. They are on the track soaking up the oil put down by Bobby Rahal, so we'll take and be right back. Welcome back to State Fair Park in Milwaukee. The yellow remains out because of Bobby Rahal's blown engine. They're still over on the back stretch putting the oil dry down. Here are the top 10 with 162 laps completed. Rick Beer is the leader. Al Unser Jr. running second. Tom Sneva is third. Michael Andretti fourth. And Al Unser Sr. running in fifth position. Sixth place, Gordon Johncock. Seventh is Howdy Holmes. Eighth, Chip Ganassi. Ninth is Kevin Kogan. And tenth is Danny Ungaius. Now, we're going to see how fast Tom Sneva really is. Rick Mears is in the lead, but Tom Sneva is actually ahead of him on the racetrack. So we're going to see if Tom can make up that lap and get back into a competitive situation with Rick Mears. The green comes out once again. By the way, Bobby Rahal did not have a blown engine, despite the fact that there was a lot of smoke pouring from that engine. As a matter of fact, he is still out there on the racetrack. Well, here's the situation. Rick Mears has about estimate uh, three quarters of a lap lead on Tom Sneva. We have 36 laps to go in this race. Mears right now is in heavy traffic. Sneva probably has that figured out even though he can't see Rick right now. You see Rick in a bright yellow car. They're making it easy for you to pick out Rick Mears here this weekend. And Rick is driving harder probably than anybody in the racetrack right now, even harder than Sneva because he knows for every second that he is caught in traffic, Tom Sneva is out front making up ground. The question is, can Tom Sneva pick up three quarters of a lap in just 35 laps? Sneva appears to have been a little faster than Rick most of the day, but I don't know. Three quarters of a lap in just 35, that is a mighty tall order. There you see Mears now working on, I think it was tail Bobby, he was going underneath. Heavy, heavy traffic. Now he moves up on Howdy Holmes. Howdy Holmes running in the top 10. Rick Mears running as hard as he possibly can because he knows that Sneva is out front with a clear racetrack and just passing around this one mile over. Well, we have seen instances of blocking in Indianapolis type car racing, but not in that situation because the car that Rick Mears just left was Howdy Holmes, who is a teammate of Al, or rather a Tom Sneva. Sneva running in the clean air and moving very quickly. Rick Mears still trying to pick off the back markers. Ed Pym right ahead of him now in turn number two. Rick Mears moving to the inside and moving by slow, uh, quickly rather, at the end of the back stretch. Now into turn number three. All we need is one more yellow, and that means that Tom Sneva would be able to make up that three quarters of a lap. But for right now, we are under green with 168 laps completed, and Rick Mears is the leader in car number six. Mears from Bakersfield, California. The Indianapolis 500 winner in 1979 and in 84, and he was the IndyCar champion in 79, 81, and 82. Rick Mears, the last time around, the 
distance between himself and Sneva was one lap minus a straightaway as Rick was exiting turn number two right there. Tom Sneva was going into turn number three. And I'll tell you, the laps are going by, I think, too quickly for Tom Sneva. If we stay green the rest of this race, Bob, I don't think he's got enough time, even if he's running a half a second faster. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, it was fortunate for Rick Mears that he was able to pit under yellow but unfortunate for Tom Sneva that he came in during a green, and that is essentially the difference in this race at this point. And that is literally nothing more than racing luck. What happened was, under a yellow fly condition on lap 90, they made an insurance stop, the Penske team did, and later on in the race, that allowed them to go further. They waited longer for a yellow, and it was what put them into the lead. Second position belongs to Al Unzer Jr. in the Coors Light Silver Bullet, car number seven. Everybody believes that a victory for Al Unzer Jr. is just a few races away, but he's had trouble to this point. What are the characteristics of the car that you don't like this weekend? Well, the corners are, are very far apart. I have an understeer uh, in one, and then I go into three and have an oversteer. So you know, we're trying to fight and bring it closer together. Well, that, of course, was Alan Sir Jr. with some comments before he qualified. And he got the handling problem straightened out for the most part during qualifying as he was able to qualify for eight starting position outside of row number four. And right now, he is in second place behind Rick Mears. So it's going to be Al Unzer Jr.'s best finish if he can hang on to that second spot. 173 laps are completed. We have 27 to go in the Dana Rex Mays 200. We have had only two leaders in this race. Rick Mears, then Tom Sneva, and now Rick Mears once again. Second, Al Unzer Jr., third place, is Tom Sneva, fourth is Michael Andretti, and running in fifth place is Al Unser Sr. Back with more live action from State Fair Park in Milwaukee in a moment. ESPN, your number one on a racing network today live at State Fair Park in Milwaukee for this 200 mile IndyCar race, the first of eight that will bring you live this year on ESPN. And the leader is Rick Mears, followed by Alan Zer Jr. and Tom Sneva. Mears in the number six, Pennzoil March with a Cosworth engine down the back stretch. Still about a half a lap lead on second place, Al Unzer Jr. and about a three quarters of a lap lead on third place, Tom Sneva. We had a nice field of cars that entered here again this weekend. And I'm beginning to see some smoke from that car, Larry. Very obvious on the straightaway. Is Rick Mears slowing down? I've, it appears that he is. There may be a problem in the Rick Mears car. We'll watch it. Look at the smoke coming from the rear of the race car. We'll see if Rick comes into the pits, but it looks like he has a serious problem. He comes off of the fourth turn. He'll not make a pit stop. He does, however, raise his hand to the pit crew as he comes down the straightaway. Let's continue to watch this situation. Well, Rick was well below the yellow line the last time around that corner. He was obviously sensing what was going on in the engine compartment behind him. The car has slowed off the pace it was running a couple of laps ago, and Rick again way down in the bottom of the racetrack trying to monitor the situation. Is he coming in? No. Once again, he stays out of the racetrack. Well, we don't know exactly what's going on, but we'll continue to watch for smoke at the rear of Rick Mears' car. It could be a broken header. 20 laps to go. Anything can happen in these last 20 laps. Let's go down to Gary Lee. And standing by watching the activity is Rick Gallus, the owner of Alice or Jr.'s car. You saw that smoke come from uh, the number six Mears machine. Obviously, that's got to put a smile on your face at this point. Well, we're still worrying about Sneva behind us. You know, Tom's running awful hard, and... Uh, we don't know what's wrong with Rick. We're just trying to finish the race. So Al has complained all weekend about the handling of the race car. Obviously, it's working now. It's working real good. They they worked on it last night, and they did a real good job, and the crew's done good, and we just have to see. It's Neva closing in. Do you have the horsepower to stay out in front? I hope we got the tires. <laughs> all right. There's the question mark. The tires, will they hold out? Will they give Al Jr. a victory? Well, Rick Mears 
now showing no signs of coming in for a stop. As a matter of fact, the smoke is not as evident as it was a couple of laps ago, and he continues to run in the lead. We'll be back to see if there is a further development after these messages. Back at State Fair Park, Gary Benhausen just made a pit stop. He had a flat right rear tire, and it created some interesting racing over in turns three and four as a whole bunch of cars were behind him. And he was able to move to the inside of the racetrack, and everybody got around okay. And now Gary Benhausen moves back out onto the racetrack. There is the leader of the event, Rick Mears, in number six, followed by Al Unser, Jr., the smoke from that car no we're not i know that uh, rick looked at the crew a couple times by we knew they were working with the pit board not the radio the decision was obvious go for it stand on it the only way you're going to beat sneva is to run as hard as you can the rest of the race and by the way sneva has caught the path and sneva is rapidly closing in on al unser jr so rick gallus's fears i think are going to be experienced al unser senior in car number one is driving a good race he and fifth position, and of course he is Rick Mears' teammate in the Penske group, the Miller High Life, car number one. Al Unser Sr. in fifth place, his son is now riding in second position. Hi, I'm Al Unser. Maybe I don't make it to the winner's circle every race, but you fans can. In the Cart Winner Circle Club, at some tracks you'll get behind the scene and even talk with your favorite driver. At home, you'll receive the official CART newsletter, the 200-page media guide, free gifts, and more. A year in our club costs only $25. For how to join, write P.O. Box 150, Pontiac, Michigan, 48056. Come on, join me in the Winner's Circle Club. There's the leader, Rick Mears, crossing the start-finish line and completing lap number 189. We've got 11 laps to go, and here's the battle for second position. Tom Steva just now passed, or is at least running side by side with Al Unser Jr. One goes to the high side, one low of Danny Sullivan, Tom Sneva, and Al Unser Jr. battling for second place on the backstretch. Now Tom Sneva pulls ahead just slightly as they move into turn number three. Tom Sneva has cleanly moved into second position. Al Unser Jr. is back to third. And now Tom Sneva closing in on the leader, Rick Mears. The question is, can he do it, and does he have enough time? No, without a yellow, it cannot be done. Ten laps to go. Mears enters turn number three. Sneva right now exiting turn number two right now. There you see him on the screen. He does not have enough time. 191 laps, 192, I believe, this time around. So as long as Rick Mears does not have a problem and we do not go yellow, that little insurance stop that was taken quietly at lap 90 it was just one of those decisions that you make. It's not really a particularly good or a particularly bad decision, although it does give you a little more time to go and wait for another yellow. That was the difference in this race. So it looks like that for the third consecutive year, the winner of the Indianapolis 500 will reign supreme here at Milwaukee. It happened in 1982 with Gordon Johncock. Last year, Tom Sneva won the race, and it looks like that the guy who won the biggest race of all, the Indy 500, last Sunday, is going to walk off with the victory here at Milwaukee today. Rick Mears in turn number three, but the word from the officials is that Tom Sneva is clicking off a second a lap with now six laps to go. It just isn't going to be time enough for Tom Sneva. Rick Mears now moving up on the exhaust pipe of Dick Simon, who's had another good day on the mile. Simon has had to make four pit stops, whereas most of the other competitors have made two or three on green, or uh, rather on yellow. Simon has made all four, I think, under green today, and it's really hurt his standings, although he still does continue to run in the top ten. We just saw Rick Mears go by. We're checking on the interval. Here comes Michael Andretti. He runs in fourth position. Here goes Kevin Kogan by, and there is Tom Steva. You get an idea as to how far behind Tom Steva is, and that is more. You've got a five-lap lead, even when you're moving in at a rate of a second a lap. But it looked like that Rick was off the throttle there at the end of the backstretch because Dick Simon and Mario Andretti left 
him in their wake. But perhaps Rick realizes that he has victory wrapped up and is going to take it rather easy for these last four laps. Yeah, I think so, Bob. Uh, remember a couple of years ago when Rick, when things were going very well for Rick, we saw him run some of the most intelligent races we've ever seen in IndyCar action. Gary Lee in the pit area. Now, Roger Penske is not sharing your enthusiasm and optimism because, again, the radios are not working. They're not sure exactly what the problem is and how, car, how long the car will last. Their only recourse is to let Rick stay out there, take it as easy as possible, making the car last. So you guys are sharing some enthusiasm up there and optimism that's not being shared by Penske. Well, if Tom Steva had five laps... Uh, besides the two and a half that he has to go, he could catch Rick. But here's the completion of lap 198. Only two more to go. And I personally believe that Rick Mears has this one in the bag unless the engine just quits completely on him. We are seeing evidence of smoke again. But with now a lap and a half, a mile and a half to go, Rick pretty much has this one in the bag despite the fact that Steva is pursuing very, very hard. Here is Rick Mears now in turn number four, coming off of the turn, looking for the white flag from the cart starter. There it is, the white flag is out. Rick Mears has less than a mile to go, and the Dana Rex Mays 200 will be his. Tom Sneva is down in turn number one. There is Rick now at the end of the backstretch. He made up two seconds. And Rick is understand. broken, and he Rick is broken. Mears is slowing dramatically in turn number three. This could be side by side. I still don't think Tom is gonna win it. And Rick, yes, Rick is, slow, is slowing. Rick is slowing. He's coming into the pits. And Tom Sneva is going to win the race on the last lap. There's a checker. Oh, Sneva wins. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? He's going to finish. Here, crossing the start-finish line, there is no power in that car. Unbelievable. Tom Sneva makes us all liars <laughs> and well, wins this race. And there is the dejection on the part of the Penske crew and Roger Mayer, or Roger Penske, I'm sorry. They had it in their grasp. There's Danny Luganville, their PR man. It was their win right up to the final turn, but the engine just wouldn't go 200 complete laps. <laughs> it went about 199 and three quarters laps. We did say that if Rick stays out there, I might add, that there wasn't <laughs> enough time. Tom Steva going by, Rick Mears limping down the backstretch. Rick may not even get all the way around. I think he has come to a stop. There he is in turn number two. So the man who was just 30 to 45 seconds from victory lane and the accolades of hundreds is now alone on the backstretch with three safety crewmen. There are new promoters here at Milwaukee, the Jufri brothers, and their slogan for the weekend is, let's put fun back in racing, and <laughs> they have done it. Here is Rick Mears slowing in the fourth turn. He was that far away from a win. Tom Sneva on the accelerator, passing and going on to victory. Well, it's Tom and Bobby Rahal, I believe, come down the front stretch side by side, and you know, Sneva's got to be wondering, am I really winning this race right now? Knowing Tom Sneva and how in control he normally is, I had a feeling he probably knew exactly where he was. But Sneva, well, they pulled a rabbit out of the hat this time, didn't they? Well, it's going to be an interesting in uh, conversation with Tom Sneva in victory lane. Gary Lee is down there. Tom is unstrapping and strapping the belts and will now be taking off his helmet to talk with Gary. That was an unbelievable finish. Absolutely incredible. Well, we'll be back in just a moment to talk with Tom Sneva, who pulled one out of the hat, as you indicated, Larry, and won the race here. We'll be back for the interview in just a moment. Rick Mears' car went away with less than a quarter of a lap to go. Tom Sneva wins the Dana Rex Mays 200 at Milwaukee in an incredible finish. Let's talk with the winner. Here is Gary Lee. Tom, no matter how much racing savvy you have, sometimes it's lady luck. Well, I, uh, we got a little help there at the end. I'm not sure how we got so far behind, but uh, they made us run real hard at the end, and, and we were gaining, but, uh, you know, we got a little help at the end, and, and the guys did a super job, so what can I say? It looked to us like at the start of the race you had something to prove, maybe a little uh, vindictive after last week at the Speedway. No, not really. You know, we, we felt we had a good shot at the Speedway, and we came here to race, and uh, that's exactly what we did. We slipped and slid all day and brought the Texaco Star home number one. You had the disadvantage of running without the radios today, so the crew could not tell you about the smoke coming off car number six. Yeah, I didn't have any idea. They gave me some minus signs, and it looked like I was picking him up. But uh, 
Yeah, you know, I was a little confused how we got so far behind in the first place. What did you say to yourself when you saw him coming off the corner? Well, you know, I thought there was more laps to go. I didn't realize we were that close to the finish, but uh, he was slipping and sliding, almost lost it. I don't know, they, uh, you know, obviously lost a bunch of oil out of the car, but, uh, you know, the Texaco Star ran all day, the Haviland stayed in the motor, and we're happy. At Long Beach, you proved to a lot of fans that you could drive on the road course. You've got one coming up in two weeks. We're looking forward to it, you know. We're in pretty good shape for the national championship, and uh, that's what it's all about. Very happy. Tom Steva, congratulations. What a win. Tom Steva, and there is Rick Mears who is in the Penske pit, and Rick uh, has a smile on his face, and he would uh, think that perhaps he couldn't muster one after that very disappointing finish. We'll be back to talk with Rick Mears in just a moment. Every the Victory Lane celebration at Milwaukee State Fair Park. Tom Sneva is in the winner's circle, but the victory was snatched away by Tom from Rick Mears. Here's Gary Lee. Rick Mears today, Lady Luck turned her head on you. <laughs> yes, it did. Uh, you know, I, I guess uh, Tom and I traded into the stick from last race to this race, but you know, I kind of won my first champ car race ever and uh, kind of in that same fashion, except uh, reversed. And so I guess we lost it in the same fashion today, the other way around. When it comes to paydays, you'd take last Sunday over this Sunday any day. Oh, yes, absolutely. You know, but we definitely wanted to win this race. That's what we were here for. We lost the radios at the very start of the race uh, on the grid. The radios went out, so we were playing everything by the board, and, and I couldn't really relay back and forth what I needed done to the chassis, so we kind of had to run with the car the way it was all day long and, and just hope on a little bit of luck and strategy, and uh, the team just did a hell of a job in the pits getting me in and out, and Penske made a good call on a pit stop, which got us a, a lap ahead almost, and, uh, you know, that, that pretty well sent us home free except for the failure at the end. We saw the smoke about, what, 15, 20 laps from the end. When did you notice you had a problem? About 20, 20, 25 laps from the end, it went weak. Uh, the motor got weak. It started, actually started running on seven cylinders. And uh, for the last 20 to 25 laps, I was running on seven cylinders, and I was really sweating it and having to run as hard as I could because I couldn't pass anybody hardly down the straightaway. So I had to make all my dives and move in traffic, which made it very dangerous, you know, or not dangerous, but exciting. And, uh, you know, we tried to, tried to hang on to as much time as we could, and we... We actually hung on to enough time to win the race but until it finally let go completely on the last lap. Ever feel like you wanted to hop out and push the car across the finish line? Uh, yeah, I wanted to, but I knew it wouldn't be enough good. Tom was too close. It wasn't your day today? No, no. I, I, second's all right. It got us some points. And we're, we're happy for that. We're very fortunate. A tired but yet able to smile, Rick Mears. So the string is broken. The Indianapolis 500 winner does not repeat with a win here at Milwaukee. Instead, it is Tom Sneva who is celebrating in victory lane. We'll be right back. Was it uh, Yogi Berra that said it's not over till it's over? Yeah, I think <laughs> Roger Penske is going to pick up on that slogan. I'll tell you, that really was an incredible turn of events at the oh, end. By the way, first it. place today with 23,000, second place Rick Mears, 18,000. Tom Sneva was the points leader coming into today's race, so he will continue to be in number one place in the point standings. Michael Andretti continues to be a real threat for the championship for 1984. He was second in points behind Sneva. He finished fourth in the race today, so Michael is one to keep your eyes on. We're going to take a real quick look at the top ten. Tom Sneva, Rick Mears, Alan Tur Jr., Michael Andretti, and Alan Tur Sr. As we look at the remainder of the top ten, we'd like to say hello to a couple of friends, Pat Bedard and Michael Chandler, whom we understand both are coming along real fine. Michael, as a matter of fact, we were told we'll be looking in. He's been out surfing, so if you're worried about <laughs> Michael Chandler, hey, Mike, hi, 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 how you doing out there? And uh, watch yourself on the, on the board. Yeah, and continue to get better. So the victory lane celebration now with uh, Tom Sneva has moved back uh, behind the pit wall. And Sneva wins an incredible race here today over Rick Mears, whose car stalled coming out of turn number four on the very final lap of the race. Well, the Dana Rex Mays 200 has been brought to you by Pontiac. Test drive a new Pontiac at your Pontiac dealer because at Pontiac, we build excitement. And by Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. And by world-famous Bardall, get Bardall, the engine saver. A reminder that we'll see the Indy cars on a road course at Portland, Oregon, two weeks from today. And we'll also have a live NASCAR race for you at Pocono a week from today. Tom Sneva won one the hard way here at the State Fair Park in Milwaukee today, passing Rick Mears on the very final lap. For Larry Newber and Gary Lee, this is Bob Shakin saying thanks for joining us. So long from...
from State Fair Park in Milwaukee.